Hello, everyone, and welcome to Claret and Booze. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. What a wonderful week it's been to be a West Ham fan, isn't it? Isn't it, eh? The roller coaster's back. Never really went away. It didn't, did it? As always, if you are new to this channel, please subscribe. It does help us. Click the button. It don't cost anything. And don't forget, drop a like on the video. It does help us. I don't just say it for my own health. It really does. Um, and it inspires me, motivates me, makes me feel better. Um, so, yeah, please do click the like button. Most importantly, it tells YouTube to share it around. So you're helping the channel. Um, okay, look, I, I refuse to report on Mazwahi, whatever his name is, the right back, even though, look, I'm not saying I had any in, inside information to say it was going to collapse. I didn't. I just arrived at the stage already this week where even if you're almost at the here we go stage with Romano or Pletterberg, the bloke who broke the news and then unbroke it, it's just not a surprise. I weren't buying it. I weren't buying it because how many times have we been at this stage before, honestly? And for them to cite that agents' fees are the issue, agent fees are not the issue. They're not. It's whether or not we can plant our own agents in the tr in the chain. That's all it is, you know? It was no surprise that with some of our big signings, you know, you know, the biggest, Lucas Paqueta, who's the man that unveiled him? Barry Silkman. We've got to be in that transaction. We've got to have a man in now. And that's why they're greedy agents if they don't let us do it. So it's either going to be a salt house signing, a Silkman player, or a player that will allow us to mess around with the transaction chain behind to plant someone in it. That's basically it. That's the way it works. That's the way it works at West Ham. It's no coincidence that we, we're the only club that can't deal with agents. We can't. We can't do it, you know, because we want it all for ourselves. Not us directly, but the owners of the club. That's the way it works. We've got four weeks left until, or just over four weeks left until the window closes, three weeks left until the season starts, and we've got three pre-season games. We've gone out and we've got a third-choice goalkeeper We've got um, a, a young Brazilian who I'm very excited about, um, but he probably ain't going to start. We might have to at this rate. And we've got Max Kilman. You know, Max Max Kilman's fine. Good, solid defender. 40 million. 40 million we paid for him. Do you know why? Because the agents were aligned. You know, Salt House broke with that deal. So we'll pay 40 million. That's fine. Don't matter. This is this is the restraints that we've got. Nothing has changed at West Ham. I was really hoping, I was really, really hoping that things had changed. It's been bringing me down this week. I've decided now to not let it bring me down. Um, apathy set in. I'm starting to just find this fucking funny now. It's ridiculous. We are a joke. We're an actual joke. We are. This is turning into one of the worst windows. It could all change. We could go out and, and, and it'd be amazing. We could go and do what we did in the last window and get Caduce, Alvarez and Dinos in the last week. Who knows? I don't know. But it's very worrying that a lot of the players that we're targeting at the moment are turning their nose up at us, even Aaron Wambasaka. This player, Mazwahi, the bloke, he spends more time injured than he does playing football like his compatriot Aguirre. Why was we even looking at signing him? And the other thing that bothers me as well, you're looking at <clears throat> a project, transfer strategy. What transfer strategy? <clears throat> Aaron Wambasaka, Carl Walker-Peters and Wes Wahi, whatever his name is, they're all completely different. Completely different profiles of right back. That doesn't suggest that there is a fucking strategy there. Just go and buy someone, get someone in. That's not right. That's not what I thought we were getting. The Alford, I mean, the Alford debacle was ridiculous. Honestly, it's one clusterfuck after another. It's been this window. Concession pricing, price hikes, changing the categories of the game. So if you want to go as a family of four to Aston Villa, it's going to cost you 400 quid to go and watch this shit. Dad's army play because st we're still going to have we're still going to have these players playing. Sufel, Ings, Antonio. At this rate, we are. So what exactly are they charging for? But the the issue is the main the main problem is <clears throat> we're struggling to convince players to come. Now it can't just be the fact that we ain't got European football. I don't think it's that at all. I think when Tim came in. Obviously, you've got this. He had this new allure about him. He had the recent project at Leverkusen behind him. He's come in. He's spoken to players. He's given them a presentation on what he's going to do at West Ham. It's a good sell. Yeah, go on. We'll come. This is exciting. Then what happened? The next fucking year happened. 
this club that Tim works for willingly allowed their team to limp out of Europe and through a season without even putting up a fight, without even trying to salvage anything from that season. That's what this club done. They showed zero ambition, none. We just allowed ourselves to backtrack. That isn't going to help anyone. It's not. It's not going to help convince people like, look, Alvarez ain't going to get sold. I know he's not because we can't sell him, but he's a player that I know don't really want to be here now. If he could go, he'd go. Because they've had a look. They've seen what West Ham are all about now. And it is. So many people have been saying it since day one. Look, listen, Moyes was a massive problem. He's the reason we're in this mess now. 500 million spent. We've got the oldest and the smallest squad in the league. That's his fault. It's also Sullivan's fault who oversaw it. He was obviously pleased with the job that David Moyes was doing. That's a massive problem. Alarm bells. That So, so the, Moyes was a problem. He's gone. But Sullivan is always going to be a ball and chain around this club. He is. We're still operating in exactly the same manner that we always have done. Prove me wrong, West Ham. Prove me wrong. Go out next week. Bring some players in. Make it look like Tim does have a say. Like he is a director of football. Like he does control the budget. Because he don't, does he? He's here as a fucking heat shield. A fire blanket for Sullivan and Brady to carry on creaming club money through their favourite agents behind a highly paid fucking prop. Because that's what you look like at the moment, Tim. This is too much. It's too much now. We were supposed this was supposed to be a new start. We've had, yes, I know we've had the cup win before anyone says it, but we've had three years of pain. Anyone that loves football, any West Ham fan that loves football, have had three years of misery under David Moyes. He's gone. The weight was lifted. We should be looking forward to this next season. We've gone out and we've got a very good manager. Anybody that's seen footage of the training videos and what's going on, and if you're hearing comments from players and this, that, the other, so positive, so positive from the training ground. We've gone and got a good guy that wants to play football the right way, but he needs tools. This is still a David Moyes team. It is. We have got a core of good players. We have. I mean, we were saying it all last season. Babbling Irons did a video on... You know, the best way that you can get Caduce out of Caduce is to play Alvarez, Paqueta and Caduce in the middle. We've been fucking saying that all last season and people were telling us we were talking bollocks. We said the best midfield, one of the best midfields in the Premier League, David Moyes had it, he had it in his hands. Alvarez, Paqueta and Caduce. That's the way we've got to set up and I'm assuming that's the way that Lopetegui will set up because that is an amazing, perfectly balanced central midfield that will compete with anyone. Anyone in terms of mid in terms of a midfield battle, they've got everything. David Moyes had that in his hands, but he played James Will Prowse and Suchek. That's all you need to know about the man. So what what I want to, what I want to see from West Ham now is a is a change of direction. They have got to stop. There, there has got to be something wrong. This isn't Tim's fault. Tim's already proven in his previous roles that he's got contacts galore. He can get deals done. What's happening is West Ham are refusing to let go of the reins and let go of the little bags of money, the little bandits, because they, they want to be involved in the transactions. That is all it is. That it, Sullivan and Brady have to be involved in every fucking deal at a financial level. Let him do his job. Because that's what that's the problem here. The problem here is Tim is more than likely going out and identifying targets, spending months in some cases, but like approaching approaching the window, and then weeks talking to the player. Gets the player on side, probably goes to Sullivan and says, "Right, uh, Mr. Sullivan, I've got this player sorted. Um, it's going to cost this much." Sullivan probably goes, "Yeah, yeah, uh, Barry, Barry. Um, what do you reckon of this player? <laughs> What's his name?" Oh, yeah, no, he's rubbish. He's rubbish. Barry says he's rubbish and we should get him cheaper. This fucking Duran deal is just like that. It's just like that because that's what Sullivan does. He starts making phone calls to people because he's got no football knowledge himself, so he leans on the vultures that he's relied on because that's what they are. They're vultures. They're not friends. They're people that are the, the, the business interest because they make money out of him. But what they'll do is he's, he's, refer, he's referring to them for their football insight. They ain't got no fucking football insight. They're, they're freelance football agents that are trying to 
sell their products to Sullivan, but he's too thick to realise it. Tim has got a vested interest in West Ham to deliver, to get players in, to make himself look good, and in doing so, make West Ham look good. Because that's the only way that Tim will succeed is if West Ham succeed. Trust the man. Don't trust fucking Tom Jones with our transfer business. It's ridiculous. Absolutely pathetic. And it looks like the same shit is happening again now, as has always has happened. We've got the pieces in place. I mean, how are we even here now? We've got, apparently, a football analyst team. We've got a scouting team. We've got a director of football. I bet you we're still making offers on fucking napkins. Why can't we just be allowed to move on? Why can't Sullivan just delegate the responsibility to specialists? Why can't he do that? And then rather than making little bits of money out of transfer deals, he'll yield a massive windfall. If West Ham do well and we become a big team, when he eventually sells, it will be worth more. Why is he so fucking short-sighted? It's all about his next holiday, isn't it? <sighs> Listen... I'm very frustrated with the whole thing, but I'm in quite a piss-taking mood now. I am. I'm scathing. It's pathetic. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to allow it to get under my skin. So I'm not angry, Nick, in this video, even though I've been ranting. I'm not angry. I just get excited when I start talking about it because it's amazingly fucking stupid, the situation that we're looking at now. All the pieces are in place for us to move on. They didn't spend in January. They saved money. We have got a pot of money there. We have. And we've got a guy there, if you've got 100 million, 100, 120 million, that's a lot of money for Tim to spend. Trust him to get that job done. But oh, no, 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 they're not going to do that, are they? They're not. They're getting a fucking, getting involved again. You know, you probably got Sullivan Jr. trying to, trying to skim his little bit off the top now as well. There's a whole fucking cartel of them. They're vultures. Small-minded car salesmen just worrying about what they can get in this window, completely ignoring what we could achieve if we progressed as a club because the value of the club would increase. I am don't know if I'm making any sense here. But one thing I do know is West Ham are making no fucking sense whatsoever. For the record, I'm glad we didn't get Maserati, Maserati whatever his fucking name is. It's, it's completely injury prone. Completely injury prone. It's, it was a pathetic attempt of a signing. A good player. It would have been a good player for three games a season. Anyway, look, enjoy your weekend. I'm going to be back tomorrow. I've heard about some other names that we've been linked with, but I'm not going to tell you because they're probably bollocks and all. They are. I've completely lost the plot with the transfer window. I don't even care who we sign. Fucking sign Duran, don't sign Duran. Don't care. Whatever. I'm just going just gonna to take the piss now for the rest of this. See you later on. Come on, you ones. Me, 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 me.